Hi, welcome to Kelsey Ed and today we are looking at task 2 of the pre-release computer science scenario for the wildlife park which is the paper 2 to version. As always make sure you are doing the correct scenario for your region before you go ahead and solve this task. If you have not yet completed task 1 please click the the video above and you can see the earlier solution that supports this next video. Also if you are looking for task 3 then please move on to that video. And then lastly if you would like some tips on how to answer this in pseudocode and within the examination please take a look at the computer science playlist on my channel or in the description below. Here we are in task two and we are now going to start taking inputs from the users in order to calculate the total cost of the booking and that first bullet point is the one that we're going to focus on now basically for every single one of these we are going to require some input for the user so we want to create a whole new set of variables and I've just got these listed for you now. So these are all the user inputs. Now my big exam tip here is to consider the different ways that you could perform validation. It's not a requirement to put validation into the code and you won't be marked down on it in task two or task three, but they do ask that you create validation. And the reason for that is because in task number one, they will commonly ask you to give a validation rule. So any of these type of inputs would be a great place so the exam tip is that you could perform validation on user inputs and that would be the first place that I would consider. So we're going to ask the user to input for each of these. So for every input, we have to have a data structure to store it. This is going to be a value that will change throughout the program. And so they're all declared at the beginning as zero. The extras I've added in as a Boolean value because they may or may not require extras. Down here, I'm moving up now. This is our programming for task one so if you didn't see the task one video look in the link above and you can get the programming and guidance for this section but below that is our actual booking system so that's this bit right here and that's what we're going to work on now I'd like to focus on this specific section so I'm actually just going to move this out of the way so it's not distracting at all and just look at our inputs. So the first thing that I want to know is whether it is a one day or a two day ticket. That's really important because it changes the price in the array. We then want an input for how many adult, child, senior, family and group tickets they require. So each one of these will be an input. Then we're going to calculate the cost based on the number of tickets required and their position within the array. Here, if the days are equal to one, then we're gonna do one day costs. If they're not equal to one, then it must be equal to two, and we're gonna do a two day cost. You may at this stage say, hey, well, what about if they didn't put in a one or a two? That's a validation opportunity right there. And that's my top tip up here when we're declaring our variables is that these are our potential validation areas and you could validate those in, that input to ensure they could only give a value of one or two. So if they've taken a day one ticket, so if the days required is equal to one, then this will be calculating a ticket cost. We're going to write the value of all of this to the variable ticket cost and we're going to calculate, I've put each one of these into brackets just to help explain the order of operations here. So each one of these needs to happen individually and then be added. So first it goes to the array position zero, so we're going to day one array, position zero and then we're going to multiply position zero of this array versus the number of tickets required for an adult. So adult tickets multiplied by the adult price in the array. The next position in the array is child, so we multiply by child tickets. The next one in the array is seniors, so we multiply by senior tickets. And the important thing here is just to make sure that you get your index reference correct. It may be very tempting to copy and paste some of these, and if you do, don't be a fool and make an error and miss that, because I can tell you I actually did that myself in my program. And it took me a moment to identify the issue. And that is also why you should also test that all of your calculations work. Because if I hadn't done that, this calculation would not be working correctly. Okay, so with that, we have now created a ticket cost. So, so far, we've input the tickets. We've added extra tractions. 
begun to calculate the cost, but we have not yet calculated the extra cost. To calculate the extra prices, I've asked the user to input if they would like to have additional services. So do you wish to book any additional? Actually, I might change that to any extra attractions because it's just a little clearer than additional could be anything, additional tickets. So I will make that clear, extra attractions. Please enter one for yes or zero for no. I've chosen one and zero here because I'm assigning it a true or false value. So then if the extras are true, so it's a value of one, then this section will run. What I have here is actually um, a slightly different approach to a print method, and I've put them both in so that you can see how you can use them. This one here, I've made it a one-line statement where I change it to be an integer because all inputs are strings. So when this is input, the value will come as a string. So I, I put it inside of int in order to change it to be an integer. The other approach to doing that is to do a print statement and so you could print out the question and then on the next line you could do an input which assigns it to the variable and you can choose how you feel about the way each one of those looks or which works best for you that's your preference but I've done a quick print how many tickets do you for lions how many for penguins and then for the barbecue this is an interesting little caveat it's only available if it's a two-day attraction so if the days required is equal to two then we'll also give the option to book the barbecue and so now I have the number of tickets for each of my extra attractions. I just need to work out the extras total. So all I did is the same process as the last time, which was the barbecue tickets multiplied by the barbecue price, penguin tickets by penguin price, lion tickets by lion price, add them all together and you get the extras total. Once the inputs are in, the next thing that we need to do is to calculate costs. And so we're going to need some more variables here. So it mentions that we're going to need a total cost as well as the allocated unique booking reference. Now for my booking reference, I've just created a completely random number and all I'm going to do is add one to it every time that I complete a booking. So in order to calculate the total, I'm going to use this piece of code here. I'm basically going to just do a print statement. Um, you could store this into a variable as well, but I'm not that interested in doing that right now at this moment in time, but that is your own preference. So for my booking number, all I'm going to do is take this booking number and then for each iteration of the program, I will simply do the booking number would be equal to the booking number plus one. And every time the we run the program, it would increase by one. Then after that, we need to do some calculations. And so we're going to do a print statement for the final cost. So the final bill in dollars would be the ticket cost plus the extras total. And then I'm assigned a booking reference based on the booking number that we placed here. So that's displaying the booking details, including the total cost and the unique booking number. All right, now our very last bullet point is to repeat as required. So the user may want to do multiple entries. This could be the lady who is sitting, taking the bookings for the people coming in. And so she may want to keep repeating the booking system again and again as each customer comes to the line. So we're going to put all of this into a while loop because the while loop can have as many iterations until a condition is met. So we're going to want to create some sort of condition to be met. So I'm going to create some booking details up here and this will include a booking flag that will be set to true. And if the booking flag is true, then it will rebook. Now the important thing to recognize is what you would like to have included in the loop. So there is no reason to repeat this initial setup. We only want to repeat the things that are in section two. But really important thing to remember is that the booking reference number does not want to be reset to this value every time. Instead, what we would like to have is that outside of the loop so that every time that we iterate, it will increase by one and we get a unique booking reference. So right after I've moved that, I'm going to start my while loop. It's going to be while the booking is equals, so that's double equals to true. And then everything else that's in our program right now, I'm going to indent in using the tab button. So just press tab on your keyboard. That will indent to in view. And now everything is inside of that loop and running. And if you want to test, press enter. And oh, look, it didn't work. Why not? Somebody didn't put their call on. Press enter and look at that, now we've indented. So we know that that's all gonna work correctly. So down here at the end, we need some sort of user input that's gonna allow us to 
address the flag. So our flag was called booking, going to be based on a user input, setting that to int so I can get a value of either one or zero to decide if it's true or false. Okay, so I've just added in a short statement there. Please enter one for yes or zero for no if you would like to complete another booking. And then hopefully when we run this now, what we're going to see is a positive result. Oh, we've got an end of line error. Somebody didn't double her bracket. Always close the number of brackets that you open. I'm going to run it one more time. We'll try that again. Excellent. So how many days would we like to go for? I'm going to go for one day. Adults required two. Just, just me and a friend today. Thank you. No extra tickets. We're good. $40 booking reference ending here. 5457. Now, would I like to complete a booking? Yes, I would. So let's do another one. This time I'm going to go for two days. Two adults, two children. No seniors, no family no group, no extras, and look at that. Completed booking, and the booking reference number has changed by one. So now we have a unique booking. We've got this one was one eight, going five seven, this one was going five eight. And that is how you solve task number two. So um, join me in the next video for task three, because I know that's the one that a lot of people are struggling with. Thanks for joining.